hi guys so i hope all of you are doing great and today i'm just going to try a new format for my video i generally make a reaction video for the song and then i make a reaction video for the behind the scenes the magical journey video and then i have kind of a snippet of around one or two minutes in which i kind of talk about my basic observations about the song but what happens is that when I sit down to make the BTS video, it tends to get very long and the kind of video recording equipment I have, I cannot make a video more than 20 minutes. So I have to keep a check that what's the time duration gone and is it 20 minutes? Do I need to reset the recording button and all of that? So it becomes a little cumbersome and what happens in turn is that I'm at times not able to discuss everything that I really want to discuss about the song. So I just thought that I will make a BTS video separately. But before that, I will just talk about all the things that I observed, my basic understanding and analysis of the song and the video before that. So this is what I'm going to do today. So in case you like this format and it works for you, uh, just let me know and I'll keep working on this. So Muaz's Sarif, uh, the song that was just released a few days back, I watched it and I uploaded a reaction video. I'm sure most of you must have watched already. I uh, had a lot of fun watching it, but some observations and this time each co studio song is different from the previous one and this one again was a little different. So I just want to share my observations. First thing I noticed was that uh, there was a heavier use of special effects in this song. We had seen something in, in the last two songs as well. We had something happening in Piche Hut as well. And then we had some stuff happening in Ye Dunya as well. But this time I observed that it was a little more. And especially towards the end of the song, the whole visual and musical treatment kind of reminded me of American Horror Story and the, the kind of opening sequences they have. It kind of reminded me of that, which helped me to identify a connection between this music video and a TV show which came out recently, which I enjoyed thoroughly. And it may be just my own observation because you tend to build connections with the things that you are exposed to uh, since I have seen that show, since I have seen this video. Uh, maybe I'm connecting it, but that's how mind works. And I wanted to share this with you. So the show that I'm talking about is The Haunting of the Hill House. That is easily, for me, the best show that I've seen in the last 10 years. I enjoyed it so much. I'm not saying it's the best show that's been made in the last 10 years. It's just the best show that I have seen. So it's my personal thing, more of it. So when I watched this song a few times over again, after watching it for the first time, the set reminded me of that show so strongly. The staircase, first of all, was almost identical with what we had in that show. And the tall windows at the back were also kind of reminiscent of one of the most important scenes in the show. But most importantly, the way uh, the camera was handled throughout the song, it reminded me of one very important episode from that show in which they were jumping time and space. And they had shot that episode in the exact same way as this video was shot. So the characters would move from one place to another and it would be the same set but different spaces and the camera would follow them and then the story would progress they would jump time and space it would become a flashback then it would become the present and all of that it's a wonderful wonderful uh, show by, uh, guys by the way so if you have not seen it i would recommend if you have a palette for some horror it's not it's not jump in your seat kind of horror. It's more like a psychological horror. So if you have a palette for that, I would definitely recommend that. Okay, coming back to the song. So I noticed that was happening in this song. But then I started thinking this is not something which Cove Studio has not done in their earlier songs. If we look at Kana Yari, it was the same thing. We uh, were moving around the set and the camera was following the singer and the artist. And then uh, another artist was coming in and there was a lot of dynamics happening the same way. So why is this different? I felt this was different because in Kana Yari, they were maintaining the sense of the space. It looked like that the person is moving around in the same house. But this song, it, it, there was a very conscious effort to create a jump in the space, which kind of gave it a dreamlike quality and it complemented the whole song as well because we had two very distinctly different styles of music and they kind of needed that kind of space for them and I think that's why it came along so well. And uh, and Misha Safi's whole get up, it was, it was very strong and her nails was something which was standing out very distinctly and I was just thinking why am I noticing the nails so much so I just remembered that when I was in school there, there was a teacher of mine who used to have very long long nails and somehow you know back in the day they used to beat the kids a lot and uh, so that's why somehow uh, her nails got a lot of notice from me and i think that's that's what kind of i was reminded of with that all uh, 
nails and hand gestures as well and also i mentioned in my reaction video that it looks very angelic but it was more like a dark angel as someone pointed out in the comments later after i posted the video as opposed to a pure angelic divine kind of a feel so so i do feel that i needed to be corrected there and another comment also mentioned the stanzas that misha shafi was singing uh, they kind of talked about her own life because of the kind of case that she's been fighting for all this while and how uh, she's been treated by all the people around her so it echoes her sentiments from that point of view as well which kind of makes the song even stronger because uh, if that is the case, and that is very clearly the case if you listen to the lyrics again it it so strongly says that it so outrightly says that that she is not going to give up and she knows who's right and who's wrong and the one who is wrong how can they ever live with themselves like that so that meaning also started to come out of that song after i got that piece of information and finally rap is not my genre i keep saying that again and again but i did enjoy this song and i was just thinking why do i have that kind of reaction for this song and i think what turns out is that this is a punjabi song and the reason of punjab where i stay punjabi music is in such a terrible bad state guys it's not even funny um the kind of music that we get in the name of punjabi music is absolutely outrightly criminal at a moral level at an ethical level at an artistic level i shouldn't be even calling it music i should just call it stuff but that's bad as it is uh, but also at the same time i do want to mention that there are some very good artists as well we have sartender sartaj we have amrinder gill and a few others like them and but the problem is that the whole scene is dominated by the others and not them and we get some very few songs sporadically sometimes here and there so it's i kind of starve for good music like that and i think when i see someone doing such wonderful work with punjabi music it automatically just works for me all right guys so these are the points that i wanted to talk about and uh, that's it for today i will make a bts video very soon and we'll see what was going on in their minds when they were making that song and let's see how many of my interpretations or understandings or uh, just imaginary connections were there actually in the minds of the makers when they were working on this thing all right guys so keep listening keep reading keep watching stay healthy stay safe cheers